Five, four, three, two. Yeah, you know what it is. It's your boy, Guess Who. You now tapped sure. into the number one station in the streets right now, Street Nerd Radio. And we got Grammy nominated. <laughs> That's what they said on Google when you look them up. Grammy nominated. <laughs> Trevor Rich in the building. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, bro? Nah. You know, hey, look. You hit me up. I said, man, I got to go do this. I've been, I've been watching, bro. I've been seeing interviews. I'm like, when I get in town, I'm going to do it. And I didn't think I had enough time, but you like, need to come tomorrow. So I'm like, Hell yeah, let's do I'm going to make, make it happen for you. You feel what I'm saying? Well, I appreciate you so much for coming yes, through. Uh, to get started, just so the people ain't too familiar um, outside of the town, um, let's give a little rundown uh, about who you are, where you from. Sheesh. Track records are getting a little long day by day, man. But <laughs> Trev Rich, bro, I'm from Denver. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know I'm from Park Hill in Denver, but... Outside of that, you know, it's Denver versus everybody, so that's how it just go. Like we we all Denver, Aurora, you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah, you know, that's fuck how yeah. it go. You feel me? So what about your upbringing? How would you how would you describe your upbringing? My upbringing was it was a mixture of a lot of different things, just because it was you know what I'm saying we moved around a lot. So I was you know when I was at the crib with my parents and stuff, that's like real cool, like calm, collected. You know what I'm saying? Then I go to my grandma house and. That's where all the kids is at. So we over there wilding. You Turned know what I'm saying? We wilding over there. So it was just like a, a mixture. You know what I'm saying? I, I really start finding myself at a young, young age, bro. What and age it, would you say? I would say probably around like 12, 13. You know what I'm saying? I start figuring it out because it was like I have my friends. You know what I'm saying? I had friends since I was a jit, but just – me moving around so much, you got to get comfortable in being yourself because you always in new environments, seeing new people, meeting new people, right. going to new schools, getting new teachers. And, you know what I'm saying? So right. it was just like we bounced around so much. And you know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that nowadays, though. You think that helped you? I, bro, that's all I do now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know? So being from an area in the city, Park Hill, um, heavily populated with gang culture, yeah. uh, what do you feel like it was hard for you to uh, not get influenced uh, to go that route? Nah, it wasn't really hard because, like, no matter what anybody says, it don't matter if you a blood or not. If you from Park Hill, everybody from outside of Park Hill is going to look at you like a blood, and everybody inside of Park Hill is going to look at you like a blood, too. So, you know what I'm saying? Even if you ain't on no set, even if you, you still got to go through the same shit. You know, as we got older, you know what I'm saying, it changed in, in, in the, the, the circumstances and, you know what I'm saying, where everybody was playing for got bigger and heavier. And, you know what I'm saying, but just being a kid in Park Hill, every kid in Park Hill is around blood culture. So, you know what I'm saying, it, it rubbed off on anybody, even if you wasn't gangbanging. Right. Now, do you feel like uh, that – is it hard for you to – or is it hard for other artists that you see in the town to separate the streets from the music? No. I feel like you gotta, you gotta get around some people who see what you see in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Cause it was a, it was an early age, and it wasn't even like I didn't want to join gangs. You know what I'm saying? I just had real people around me, and I had real OGs around me who's like, "Nigga, you really got something going. Don't, don't fuck it off. Don't throw that shit away." You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like that's a lost art because now it's like. You see the young athletes and you see the young rappers coming up and it's instead it's like, you know, instead of telling them to stay out of this shit, it's like we drafting them. You know what I'm saying? People's draft them into it. It's like cool to be in gang. You see white little white boys throwing B's and C's up now. You know what I'm saying? That is, would, is, is that crazy? Is that still surprising? That it's crazy to me. But it's like it's it's the more the deeper that I get into this world, you know what I'm saying, the deeper that I see how much black culture runs everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? No matter where we at, bro. Like, <laughs> we overseas. You know what I'm saying? Like, black culture has a heavy, heavy influence everywhere, not just the United States. So what would you say the culture is like here in the town? The culture is budding, bro. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? From from the outside looking in, a lot of people outside of Denver would be like, what is y'all's culture? You know what I'm saying? Because it's so many different things. To, you know what I'm saying? It's a melting pot. But I feel like our culture is just a mixture of a bunch of different shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's not in Atlanta, it's not in LA, it's not in Texas. 
You know what I'm saying? It's a Denver. And it's like we have to learn to accept that this is Denver culture and it's going to be a mixture of a lot of shit because it's heavily influenced by a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like from uh, everything, everything that we, you know what I'm saying, grew right. up around, all of that. It wasn't like we was growing up and, you know what I'm saying, when we got older, we got into the older OGs who rapped out here. But growing up, they wasn't getting played on the radio. We didn't know, you know what I'm saying, that we had super talented rappers from this motherfucker. Fuck yeah. So at what point did did you find music? I, I started off just writing, you know what I'm saying? Like with really a journal in class, you know what I'm saying? Like outside of class, wherever I was at. And it became something that was like so heavy on my mind at all times that there was times where I couldn't even get my schoolwork done. You know what I'm saying? So it was like I, I, I'm in class and this teacher is teaching me something that I really, really needed to you know what I'm saying? No to pass this class, and I'm writing raps, bro. <laughs> Do you remember your first rap? <laughs> I kind of remember it a little bit, but not too much. I remember, I do remember that my mom and dad made me put it on our answer machine. It was your answer machine? It was on the answer machine. So e early support. <laughs> early. Early support early. in front of family. My dad's sitting there with the phone like, when he beat, you better <laughs> Ooh, not too many. Hey, if you don't remember that, you too young for me. Okay, <laughs> them was the days. Them yeah, was the bro. Days. My first rap, it was on a, uh, it was on the answer machine, bro. When and did it become serious? It got serious when music became shit that helped me cope with life and shit that I was going through at a young age. So. You know, I was just writing stuff at all times and like trying to write bars and you know what I'm saying? Like this these metaphors and similes is so crazy. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to write bars and come up with the most creative shit. And then I got into a situation where my parents had got divorced. And I was like, I'm gonna do the same shit I've been doing. You know what I'm saying? And I started writing. And when I started writing, I actually started like bleeding out on the page. And I'm like, oh shit. And this ain't just fun and games no more. This is something that's helping me actually cope with life events. So at that point, it was kind of like, I would say at that point, it turned into poetry. You know what I'm saying? Not just me just writing funny freestyles to go, you know what I'm saying, kick at the lunch table and shit like that. But it became like, nigga, this is my therapy to get me through the shit that I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? And that's when it became serious for me. So you do, do, you, do you say at a young age that... Uh with your mental health as, as, as a youth and coping with writing, with that being your release, did you find yourself uh, throwing away a lot of stuff? Or do you yeah. still, do you keep a lot of that still? Nah, I was throwing away a lot of shit. Like, there's certain shit that I still, to this day, I'll just write just to get it out. That I'll never probably record, never lace, people would never hear it, but it became therapy. You know what I'm saying? So, especially when it's something that's really, really heavy on I'm gonna figure out the dopest, the most creative way to get this shit on this piece of paper, nigga, and I'm gonna let it go. You know what I'm saying? It's really a form of channeling energy for me. And and do you feel like that right there helped you mature a lot faster than a lot of people because you had the time to go through some tr early traumas in your childhood that helped you find what you cope with? Yes, it, it helped me grow up and it helped me mature fast. But at the same token, I wouldn't wish that shit on nobody. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. you don't want to wish, like, your parents divorced, and you don't want to wish early deaths in the family where you don't even understand what death is yet, but you just know you ain't going to see your nigga ever again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't wish that on no no child because that's some shit that the, 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 the trauma from that is still some shit that I be working on to this day. You know what I'm saying? In my 30s. Shit that happened when I was a kid, you feel me? So it's like I wouldn't wish that on no no kid, but that that not only did that help me grow up, but having a kid at a young age helped me grow up. You know what I'm saying? So how did that change your music? <sighs> well, let, let, we'll, we'll we'll get there. When did you go to the studio for the first time and record your first song, and what was it? Uh, it was so long ago I can't remember what it was. I know it was on the uh, album that was called Tox though, and I went to record with Tone Scarfo. That was my, I think that was my first real studio that I was rapping in before we was at Miracle's house. And so, that was before the Box Boys? Yeah, that was okay. before the Box Boys. So that was, you know, uh, it was Tone Scarfo. My dad took me over there. That's how, you know what I'm saying? My pops is like, nigga, I'm taking you to the studio. <laughs> like, you, you really get nice with this shit. So, so pops was the, the one, yeah, the driving engine yeah. behind it for a long time. Moms okay. was like, 
fuck no. She's like, nigga, <laughs> no, you know about to just be out here rapping. She's like, everybody raps, everybody plays sports. Like, nigga, because I was like, you know what I'm saying, a super, super smart kid, bro. Like, so my mom always felt like rapping was kind of like beneath me. You know what I'm saying? She's like, nigga, you really smart enough to go be a fucking engineer and, you know what I'm saying, like, doctor, nigga, you could go do any fucking thing that, like, you really that smart, you know what I'm saying? And I was really, really, like, ace and test, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, really doing that shit, but, like I said, it wasn't even about, like, being smart, it was about, like, this shit saved me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, this, this gotta be what I'm supposed to do. So that's how I had to press my line with this shit. So then you go to Scarfo, and then how you link up with Miracle? Man, honestly, bro, it, it was just like, that whole, my whole, like, youth with the Box Boys and G5, it's like so much shit rolled into one, bro. It's, just a, it's a big-ass blur, bro. Like, for real, though. <laughs> it bro, was too much fun. Bro, like, nigga, like, we doing shows. We at clubs early. You know what I'm saying? We, like, kicking it, like, for real. Because we was, like, lit at the time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know, we were, there was a point in time, me and Miracle, and uh, we lived together. Type shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I really went through some shit with my niggas, but it was like some of the most fun times I could have ever, you know. So I, I, is, is, do you, is that what helped you? Uh, so then, when do we get with K Tone? K Tone was K Tone was really like uh, I think K Tone heard Lodi, if I'm not mistaken, and I was always like trying to get with K Tone. Like, always, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, if I just get with Tone, nigga, then my shit gonna go crazy. Like, because I know this nigga could put his own out here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So K-Tone, like, once he, like, started hearing my shit, he really came to me, like, scooped me out the hood. Like, nigga, you with me. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, we about to do these mixtapes. I'm in there knocking mixtape after mixtape out. At this point in time, I'm mixing, mastering all my own shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nigga, let's run this shit up. <laughs> let's do it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, bro, like... So loaded, yeah. And then uh, loaded was a big song. Loaded was a big song. That was a big song here for loaded sure, was, for sure. Loaded was a big what, song. Did you know it was gonna do what it did when you recorded it? No, cause we was just having fun, bro. Like literally, you know what I'm saying. I honestly think now that I'm really thinking back, I think loaded came a little bit later. After I was already with K Tone, I was already with Miracle, I was already with uh, recording that insane and Mystic's house. You know what I'm saying? I was already, we was already had the box boys rolling and then loaded. And then after that, it was like off to the races. Then it was <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was off to the races it was after up. loaded. Because yeah. loaded, you know, we was probably like 18 at that time already. You know what I'm saying? Probably 17, 18. And loaded tearing everything up. I'm talking about you. We go to the bash. We walk in the bash. Nigga don't even know who I am. He playing loaded. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that th- that, th- that time, I feel like for a lot of people, is like, and a different era for different. <laughs> bro, <laughs> was it was fun. Bro, that oh, was the man. most. Those days is like, you know, for the young niggas who's coming up right now, it sucks because they really don't got shit. You Fuck know what I'm saying? Them. Like, as much as shit we had, I mean, we had Rock Island, we had fucking The Bash, we had so much shit to do as Fuck young him. niggas, though. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, you would have your, you would have your fights, and you know what I'm saying? You would have a couple little shootouts here and there, but I would say it's like niggas was fighting. Niggas was boxing. Oh yeah, like they it was. was it was seldom to where you just seen like a lot of gunplay. At, you know what I'm saying? Like that was like where the young niggas was at. You feel me? Like there was always gonna be gunplay in the hood. You know what I'm saying? But it was like at these parties and shit like that. It wasn't just how niggas is like. You Not know what I'm saying? Nah, uh, Not it, now. this is a total different era, bro. Total different. So then we get to that era, and y'all come out, and you and you making all this music, and then you making waves. Um, at that time, what would you, as of right now, what would you say that the sound of the town is? Do we have a sound? I feel like everybody, no, no, uh-uh. we don't have a sound. But I like the fact that we don't have a sound. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I would hate for us to form a sound and then all the young niggas change their sound to match that sound. Like, I like hearing new niggas who's like breaths of fresh air who got their own shit moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to hear another me. I don't want to hear, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, not, not, I don't want nobody to mock my style and just, you know what I'm saying, take that shit and run with that shit and just, because it's like, I don't want nobody to curve their creativity. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why I never wanted to curve my creativity. People would hear my shit and be like, damn, this nigga got this type shit, and this type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never box myself in. That's why some shit you gonna hear motherfucking somebody singing on the hook that's slow that I spill my heart out on, and then another one is fuck bitches get money. Nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could flip that shit either way, and I would want all the young niggas to do that to find their sound. You know what I'm saying? When niggas find their own sound, that, that creates a whole different market for them. Do you feel like a lot of artists understand the work that it, it goes into being uh, what they would perceive uh, as a full-time rapper? No. Fuck no. I, like, even me, bro. Like, me being around, you know what I'm saying, as a songwriter, me being around these, like, what everybody would consider top-tier rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a whole different lifestyle, nigga. It ain't no bullshit. Like, it's not you rap when you want to rap. You know what I'm saying? It's not, uh, I could go to the club. Nah. Actually, I'm not going to go to the studio. I'm going to go fuck with this bitch. I, I'm not going to go to the studio. I'm going to go to the club. Like, these niggas live in the studio, bro. Like, live in that motherfucker. So it's like, if you ain't at that point where that shit is just everything you want to do every day, then go do something else. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, bro, I'm telling you, every day, these niggas, is, these niggas got millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they outworking niggas. Outworking niggas with the money. Yeah, with the money. They outworking niggas. Bringing up the money, do you? How much would you say a guesstimate would it take to break an artist? A minimum? I don't care. Whatever. Give me a price. The minimum. What do you think the minimum you would have to spend this much money? And then after you tell me how much that amount is, tell me how much money you get back from that amount. Minimum to break an artist. I want to say two fifty thousand. Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand. I'm gonna say two hundred fifty k to break artists and what? And how? When? What? What do, what do you recruit back from that? If anything, <laughs> <laughs> if anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, it depends on what the artists do, bro. Like that, people don't realize, bro. Streams. Everybody talk about. I got a million streams. I got this. Like, nigga, that's pennies on a dollar, bro. I ain't shit. Where's the money at? Uh, shows for artists. Mm -hmm. Artists want to get lit and go on the road. Like that's that's the biggest shit. You go shows, endorsements. You know what I'm saying? Like royalties and shit like that, bro. You unless you a fucking Drake, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> J Cole, Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? You're like not unless, really you wanna, nothing. unless you one of them niggas, bro. Like because because streams. You got to people don't real. This is what a lot of motherfuckers don't realize when you really get into the business of this shit. <clears throat> uh, artists, especially an artist who got songwriter, you know what I'm saying? You got one songwriter, two songwriters. That's a percentage. You got a feature, that's a percentage. And then you only could able to establish fucking 50% of the song anyway because the other 50% of the song goes to production. So you got 50%. You got one songwriter, okay, that might be 10%. You got a feature, okay, that might be 15%. You got 25% left. If there's another songwriter, that might be 7%. Now you got 15% of a fucking... Song that may do a million streams, <laughs> and even if Damn. it does a billion streams, you got fifteen percent of that song that does a billion streams. Because when you break down what how many streams is on a dollar, and you know what I'm saying, like niggas ain't getting paid off of this music shit, bro. That's like, why y'all should stay in school, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's like people don't understand the business. You know what I'm saying? I, I would, if anybody wanted to be a, a rapper, I wouldn't tell you don't be a rapper, but do your best at every given moment to try to soak game from somebody who's in this industry. Try to, you know what I'm saying, learn the business side of this shit. Because you could learn the business of this shit and be like, nigga, I don't even want to be a rapper no more. Who would you say some of the people are that gave you that some of that game? Oh, man, my whole, I got a, my management staff is crazy. You know what I'm saying? We got uh, Pulse Music Group. We got um, the Revels Group. You know what I'm saying? And these is groups of managers. You feel me? So I get to see what's going on at all times. And we get to be at the house around and soak game. And you know what I'm saying? Really listen to them. And they, they talking about this. But if I'm, you know what I'm saying, be, get to get included in the conversation, I'm listening the whole time. I'm figuring this out. I've been doing this for the last two years, bro. I've been on the road just going back and forth for songwriting. You know what I'm saying? Two going on three years. And every chance that I got to sell game, I sell game. I feel like I could run a label now. Is that a dream? I feel like it's 
I wouldn't say it's a dream because it's like. Is it a goal? Yeah, I would say it's a goal. It's a goal. Because it's like, you know, a dream is something like, nigga, if, if it could happen, it could happen. Like, this shit can happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, I could really do this. But my, my whole focus has to be, has been to really run it up on this songwriting side and so game. So now the songwriting, Grammy nominated. Hey. You feel it, I'm saying? Uh, for the, a lot of people who don't really understand uh, why you got nominated for a Grammy for that too, would you mind giving us a breakdown of, of how that works as a songwriter? All right, so basically what happened was we got a chance to work on a record for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, right? So there was already records on there like uh, Sunflower. You know what I'm saying? Sunflower's huge. That's probably one of the biggest singles that year, if it wasn't the biggest. You know what I'm saying? So Sunflower was the lead single off of that. So <clears throat> when we got to start working on our record for the project, we knew that we wanted to, the credit track. So the credit track is like at the end of the movie when the credits is rolling. You know what I'm saying? Because we know it's going to be action, 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 action. And we want our music to be played, you know what I'm saying, at that point. So when my partner, DJ Khalil, shout out Khalil, he was like, uh, let's let's work on this for, you know what I'm saying, try to make it a credit track. He's like, I already got a couple verses, blah, blah, we just need to get the hook. So, you know, when I'm doing the hook, I'm doing the hook as a songwriter. You feel me? I'm doing the hook like, yeah, somebody else gonna come in and lay this motherfucker and this shit about to take off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's like the funny thing about how, you know, God worked, because I was like, you know, it, it took me a while to swallow my, swallow my pride and, you know what I'm saying, like tuck my ego and be like, all right, I'm about to go write to make somebody else rich. <laughs> to make somebody else more famous. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, I'm about to do it. Fuck it. You know, this is back against the wall, and you ain't got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? This is coming tailed right off of the the cash money deal. You know what I'm saying? That didn't go as planned. So I'm like, shit, I ain't got nothing else to lose, bro. Like, honestly, let's do it. So I went with Khalil. We did the record, and he actually hit me up like, hey, bro, we leaving you on the record. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, nah, hell, you lying, bro. Like, get off my phone playing, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, nah, bro, for real, we leaving you on the record. He's like, get ready. And I'm like, all right, bet. Still not believing it. Like, yeah, this is crazy. You know, but I had that in the tuck, and you know what I'm saying? They was like, this movie's about to come out now. I'm like, what? Like, when? They like, this the movie's about to come out in two months, three months. <laughs> oh, like, damn. He's like, that, the trailer's already out. Could would you? Would they? Did they tell you you couldn't tell nobody? Nah, he didn't really tell me I couldn't tell nobody, but he was like, you know, you tell who you want to tell, but I would rather you just show him. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's kind of like a big thing that I'm learning in this industry is like, nigga, you got so much different opportunities flying across your desk at all times. Like, you just running your mouth about each opportunity, and you know what I'm saying? You ain't locked that shit in yet. You feel me? So I feel like that's when shit fall through. Like, if any young niggas is listening now, if you getting opportunities and you got some shit in the cut, like one of them real motherfucking seven six tools in the clip, nigga, you know what I'm saying? And you like, nigga, I'm about to tell the world right. Don't, nigga. Do not tell the world about the shit you got in the cut, nigga. Let that shit happen and then be like, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to tell somebody about an opportunity. I'm going to tell somebody about my accomplishment. You feel me? Like, I, I don't want, you know what I'm saying? I, I, have, I have so many records in my phone with big artists on them right now. You know what I'm saying? If I'm running around like, bro, I got this record with so-and-so. Bro, I got this record with so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? And then the shit don't ever drop. It's like, bro, we ain't listening to you no more. You know what I'm saying? What happened to the other shit? So it's like, I, I would rather, like, you know what I'm saying, let this shit happen. And then when it happens and, you know, the big artist posted or the label posted or something like that, then, then we post it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not just going to run my mouth about the shit I'm working on before it's all the way concrete. Is there artists that, uh, that would surprise people that have writers that people think ain't? I mean, I don't want to burst nobody's bubble where everybody got a fucking writer. It's not no bullshit, bro. Damn. <laughs> but this is the thing, though. I feel like a lot of people, like, the, the big taboo around songwriting is like, oh, nigga, you got bars, but you got niggas writing your bars. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I won't say everybody has that. Okay. Everybody don't have that. But as far as, like, nigga, if you got that heat, you got that shit, and you got a hook on a beat that so-and-so or so-and-so or so-and-so here and be like, nigga, I want this motherfucker, they're going to take it. They're going to take it. That's songwriting. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so is that what the majority of it is? Majority of it is. Like, any okay. sessions that I've ever been in with, with, like, big artists, like, 
we'll write together, nigga. I'm not just gonna sit there and write that whole shit. Like that don't, you know what I'm saying? Like right. that don't never happen because at the end of the day, they like, no, nah, nigga, because they know how the game works too. Because that's less pub for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They know how it works. Like I gotta get my pub too. You feel me? But it's like, you know, uh, even with the artists who, you know, I'll sit in there and then we'll just come up with the the, the songs or come up with the concepts or, you know, they'll be they, they can have some people who's like songwriters who only come up with melodies. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a part of songwriting. So you have somebody who's a motherfucking beast at melodies, bro, and can't, you know what I'm saying, really pin that shit or put it together. So they'll put somebody who got crazy lyrics with somebody who got crazy melodies, nigga, put them in the same session, bro, and it's magic. You feel me? Like, go crazy. Go crazy. But then an the artist is going to be like, nigga, that shit hard. Like, ain't no artist not going to take a hit, bro. Like, what What's the best writing session you've ever been in? <sighs> the best one? There's so many, bro. There's so many fucking right. I'll say I was cooking up in a session with Masego. I like that nigga. <laughs> bro. Now, the reason, like, I'm not even going to say the best. I, I, this is the session I was the most shocked in. I'll say that. Okay. Masego can play any fucking instrument on the planet. Anything. No lie. No lie. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like anyone, I don't like. I'm gonna show him this interview when we get done and be like, "Bro, tell me if I'm lying," because you know what I'm saying. Like, I feel like Masego could play any instrument. We just in the studio and we cooking up, and it's like he like you take the mic, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like he a singer, you know what I'm saying? But he like nigga, it's jam. It be jam sessions, bro. That the, the best songs come out of like jam session type shit. Just going in there, to where it's just like you got somebody on the keys, you got a, a, a producer on his laptop coming up with shit, and then Masego got the. This or Masego go jump and play the piano or Masego go, you know what I'm saying? He just playing everything and it's just coming together while you just got a mic and you like, I gotta go off, I gotta, <laughs> turn, <laughs> I gotta turn this shit up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, that's that shit be so cold, bro. Like them, them be like the real fun ones. But like a lot of my sessions that I've been in lately is is with uh, like either uh, rap women in rap or like women in R&B. And, like, them sessions be so fun because it be, like, really strictly platonic situations. But we can have conversations like this. And then whatever whatever we talking about, the topic that we talking about, we come up with the song. Like, that's the best shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you get two different sides. Right. So I get to hear her side of the story and I get to feel my side of the story. And then let's come up with a song that everybody can relate to. You feel me? So it's like those those have been, like really dope sessions to me and those are like really challenging because it's like as a real nigga <laughs> I have to write songs or I have to help come up with songs you know what I'm saying that some of these women is bashing niggas bro like set that going off on niggas you feel me right but it's like I would rather give them my life experiences or shit right. that I've done to a woman to talk about right you know so what I'm you said uh, what's your definition of real me, hundred percent. Like I don't, I don't try to be nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Like when I say I'm real, it's not I'm a real nigga. I'm a real street nigga. I'm a real. I'm just a real person, my nigga. Like this is me. You know what I'm saying? It's I've never. I don't gotta act like I'm nothing. I'm not. I don't gotta prove shit to nobody. That to me is real. You feel me? So it's like when I'm in these sessions, I'm honest, nigga. I'm honest, bro. I'm honest. Yeah, there have been times I've been a dog ass nigga. Yeah, there have been times I've been an ain't shit nigga. Let's talk about it. Let's make it into a hit. Fuck it. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be always like love, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to shit like that because it's like that's all people want is honesty. Right. And and somebody who's going to be genuine. You know what I'm saying? And tell them like there's there's people who sit around while artists make a song and the song be not so good and the nigga be like, yeah, man, that shit is. You know what I'm saying? And then you run into somebody who I'm going to make a song with you and I'm going to be like, this ain't it. This ain't it. The motherfucker be shocked. Have you had them difficult conversations with people? Yes. A lot. Yeah. Just because, like, how I feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know everybody hears music different. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even care if you shrug my opinion off. You know what I'm saying? Because all it is is my opinion. Like, at the end of the day, I wouldn't get mad at nobody's opinion. You know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you my honest opinion. Like, Trey, what you think it is? No, that ain't it. Or I'll be like, yo, this shit crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's either one or the other. You know what I'm saying? Or it's some, oh, we could work on this somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I feel like <clears throat> just with, like, my, the most energy I've put into creating right now is with this artist named Kendra J. So 
we like really bottom to the top with the shit though. You feel me? Like I was, I had my management. She, you know what I'm saying? She was up and coming. One of her uh, producers theory, he's like, bro, I really got this super dope girl. You know what I'm saying? Who she do music? I want you to come to a session. The first session they invited me to, I couldn't make it. So I'm like, you know, I'm thinking she gonna be like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? He he bullshit. Yeah. Uh, I get back to L.A. Or no, she hit me when I got back to Denver. She's like, when you coming back to L.A.? Let's work for real. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I get back to L.A. She's like, you back? I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. let's work. All right, she's serious. You know what I'm saying? But the first record we did, the first record I did with her, I honestly say we probably did that record in like 30 minutes, right? And it was the seesaw joint. So there's this song called Seesaw we got out right now, and we just put it together so fast, bro. And she just went in there like, how fast I write, how fast she went and knocked that motherfucker out. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it, we was just bouncing good energy off of each other, and now we seeing like what's happened ever since. That was four or five months ago. Like now she signed. We just shot her second single. Like she got some crazy shit coming. And you and, and you and you really working with her behind that? Like he really downplaying it. You see this nigga just downplaying it like this song ain't got sweetie on it and this song ain't super popular. This nigga just brush. He gonna just brush past that shit like that? <laughs> He's gonna. I, this is, I, y'all caught that right? Nah. I'm like. Like, but shit. but that like nigga that it just comes to show you That's like when up. you in a good place and when you in good energy you know what I'm saying like it's gonna always be different you yeah. feel me like and there's a lot of young songwriters and if I could give them some game you feel me like find somebody who's just like you because I I got you know we got the Grammy nominated shit and all that but like really in the grand scheme of things I'm still a new songwriter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been only doing this two years, two and a half years. So I'm still a brand new songwriter. So when you find somebody else who's got that same hunger as you, who got that same drive as you, who's going to appreciate you, and y'all can really build from the ground up, mm-hmm. if y'all blow, y'all eat forever together. As to where, you know what I'm saying, a lot of the young songwriters, they be like, we need a Drake placement, or we need a Cardi placement, or we need a City Girls placement, or we need a Beyonce placement. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, those is great, great, great things to have under your belt. You know, but it's just like you shooting for the stars, but you could have somebody right next to you, you know what I'm saying, who, who like really crazy. hitting you up, who like, bro, we could make it together. And they're like, nah, we going to save this for the Cardi record. You know what I'm saying? But then you got somebody like Cardi who has her team already. So she's going to appreciate somebody. She Cardi has somebody who went ground level with her to the top. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Everybody does. So it's like when you get to find that and you really get to like have a situation like that and find a family within that, bro, there ain't nothing like that shit, bro. So would you say the songwriter's the new A&R? I would say that. But no, because the A&R is still got to be the fucking A&R. You know what I'm uh, saying? Like, but are they really developing artists still? Some of them are. I would like the the thing about it is there's some A and R's who's just like nigga we only want the hottest shit to come across our desk, and granted, like A and R is a job that I feel like you know what I'm saying you fuck up a couple times you can get fired, <laughs> like you know, so it's like they gotta protect their necks at the same time, but right. it's like when an A and R is really willing to risk it on you, like you gotta go for it. Right, they, they don't, it don't happen a lot. It don't happen a lot. Right, so you brought up Cash Money, and I think a lot of people uh, when everybody talks about Trev they'd be like uh, he was signed to cash money mm-hmm. um, and earlier you said something like it didn't go as planned yeah. what, what happened with the cash money shit well I'm pretty sure around the same time that I was signing with cash money Wayne was leaving cash money and it just was a lot <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. Like, there would be studio sessions where, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's never been a love lost with none of them. Like, I still talk to my cash money people. You know what I'm saying? All the time, though. They still comment on my page. And you know what I'm saying? When they see me dropping some new shit, like, it's nothing but love with my niggas from cash money. But just being in the environment, you know what I'm saying, where Wayne is in the studio next door and then Bird is in the studio next door. And, like, niggas ain't really... Chopping it with each other like nigga as a kid who grew up on cash money, nigga, that fucked me up. That's crazy. That'd be fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? Like them niggas really wouldn't talk to each other at the time. And it was just like, I'm not no nigga who's gonna be like, oh, I'm choosing Bird side or I'm choosing Wayne side. Like these niggas is like this and been like this for twenty plus years. Anybody who chose in that, you know what I'm saying, whole shit was a dumbass. You know what I'm saying? To begin with, because it's like that's something for them to figure out. Like, nigga, I'm here to do a job. 
Right. That's she. If I could get soap game from Wayne, I'll soak game from Wayne. If I could soak game from Bird, I'll soak game from Bird. But Jake Beef has shit to do with me. You feel me? So, but it was just weird, bro. It was just, you know, it was just weird vibes and it was just something that I didn't want to see because, nigga, I, like I said, since a kid, nigga, I looked at Cash Money as the dream team. So to see, like, the dream team falling apart, you know what I'm saying? Right when I got to the dream team, I was like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? You know what I'm saying? Man, so in the city, they got these lists. They be coming out. Um, yeah. How you feel about those lists? I feel like it's it's a anything that has to do with controversy in Denver is gonna go up. You, know you don't think that's everywhere? No, yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. But it's like you know what I'm saying. Like I, I can, I'm pretty sure it happened in LA and Atlanta and all this shit. But I'm not a part of their culture. You feel me? So I can only speak on our culture, and we have a culture that nigga, if it's controversy, it's up. You feel me? So. Them lists do that. Like, them lists run numbers, nigga. Like, this game is about numbers. So, if I know, nigga, if I could go make a list and maybe fuck off three or four people on the list, I'm going to have a thousand comments on this bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might hit the explore page on this motherfucker. But it's like, you know, I, I would hope nobody's doing that and they really, like, putting their honest opinion into these lists, even though the list ain't... The list don't make nobody no bread. Like, if you're going to make a list, give some incentives, nigga. Like, tell these young niggas, if you want to be number one, we're going to get y'all motherfucking 100 hours, 100 studio hours. Give them now make it to number one on the list. She that to bring a new fire out in the city. What? what? So I had a I had a younger artist, Nina the Chris, in here. He says that the older, the, uh, the veterans, he would call them, uh, in the game, really don't show no love to the younger artists. Do you feel that same way? Nah. Because it's like, niggas got lives, bro. You feel me? Like, <laughs> niggas got lives. And any younger artist that I've seen that was, like, dope, I kind of, like, try to give them as much game as I can. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like the younger artist is hella entitled. There's a lot of entitlement that comes from it. Like, yo, you on, nigga. Put us on, nigga. When it's like, nigga, there's only so much a nigga can do, bro. And then it's like, when y'all not even focused on your music like that. Like, I got to hear the music, nigga. I don't give a fuck how fresh you is, how many followers you got, how many bitches you fucking. I don't care about none of that shit, nigga. If the music ain't matching, I ain't with it. You know what I'm saying? But if the music is like some shit that I could fuck with, nigga, I'll put it into the right hands. And the young niggas who know me know that's what I do. Like, I got I got A&R friends. I got, so, <laughs> you so know. So what young artist is on your radar? Right now, my favorite young, and I, I told him this all the time because I see a lot of things that, if I went back and, you know what I'm saying, did it different, I would see us, I see a lot of them, you know what I'm saying, how we was. Mm -hmm. And that's the 18. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, I really, really, really like, like what they doing. You know what I'm saying? I like what the young FBG dudes is doing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, neighbor Renee, she's like one of my favorites right now. <laughs> like, and right. me and Nate always talk. Always Nate, talk. Nate, Nate, she, she, she kind of came, came out of nowhere and she's been doing right. her thing. Nate, to me, is one that has, as far as the younger generation, I feel like she really has that star quality. You know what I'm saying? She, she really got it. And I've seen Nate perform in other places. Like, that's another thing. Like, you know, the music could be dope, but do it translate to a crowd? Can it translate to being on stage? Can you get actual fans, people who are fans of your shit? You know what I'm saying? So it's like savvy. You know, like 18. The 18. 18. You know Oxy or so, them. Ox, all of them, bro, and it's just like some, uh, you know, we was, uh, I was, I was seeing, I can't remember bro name, man, but he a uh, younger artist on Bird Gang. Uh, Mexican? No, he's not a Mexican. Little, uh, he a young light skinned cat. But it's like you know, the like, aim. I talk. No, it's not him. He's no, hard too. But it was hard. it was somebody else, and I was like, bro, keep your foot on these niggas' necks. But I can't remember his name, bro. Now it's pissing me off. But like even seeing what the fuck. Ten of them niggas is doing right mm -hmm. now. Like, bro, I love that shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? What A Measy and them is doing right now. Like, what everybody is doing right now, bro, I love that shit because it's only showing that everybody can eat. And that's the thing that you can't teach niggas. You know what I'm saying? You could tell niggas, but it's like, nigga, you eating. You the nigga who got the diamond chain. You the nigga who got the... <laughs> but it's like, nigga, everybody can eat, though. So what would you consider making it, and do you feel like you made it? Um... I feel like I made it because I ain't had a, I ain't worked a job that I didn't want to work since 2016, you know? So it's like me saying I made it, 
when people, uh, I, this is what I would ask. I would ask, who is somebody who you feel like has made it, right? And now I'm getting to the point where those people recognize me. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, oh, Trev, uh, oh, yeah, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? So that's the dope part to me. You feel me? But as far as, like, feeling successful, like, you got to feel successful just waking up doing what you love to do every day. That's success. Now, when people talking about making it, are they talking about having Bentleys and mansions and, you know what I'm saying? She's like, is that your version of making it? Because I feel like you're always going to want more. There's somebody in a Bentley right now who feel like he ain't made it. Because he ain't got a yacht. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You feel me? Then there's somebody who got a yacht right now who feel like he ain't made it because he ain't got a plane. He want a private jet. So, bro, every, it's going to be a level. Every time you get to a new level, there's going to be a level above that. So it's like, nigga, you got to feel like you made it. Nigga, when you start the race, you got to feel like, nigga, I'm here. I'm already here, nigga. I'm successful, nigga. This is, this is what I do every day. Because I know once it gets to that point where you get to this level, nigga's going to ask me again, Trey, you feel like you made it? I might have a couple more chains on. I might have a Bentley outside. I might, and then I'm like, nigga, I still want more. You always gonna want more in this shit, but nigga, you just being grateful for every step of the fucking way, nigga. You that's making it, nigga. Fuck yeah. You feel me? Like Fuck yeah. Do you still perform loaded? I I did. I actually did. I can't remember what show I did it at, but I did perform loaded. That motherfucker still go crazy? People fucking love that <laughs> fucking show. <laughs> I always wanted to ask. Like, does that shit, does, I like that song. That <coughs> Bro, motherfucker go crazy. It still ring off. I ain't gonna lie. It so still it's ring off. New music. New music. He finna drop some new music. Yeah, but it's like, I be like, bro, I be in so, these little zones, bro. And it's like, I have, just with me having single records, you know what I'm saying, with these artists that I might not even say it yet. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, that kind of filled my void, of being like, I need a hit, I need a hit, I need a hit, I need a hit. And feeling like I haven't made a hit. You feel me? Because I see what goes into a hit. And it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot. You feel me? Yeah, Niggas yeah. is dropping a bag for a hit. You know what I'm saying? There's viral campaigns. There's all types of shit in this industry. There's little tricks and, you know what I'm saying, tricks of the trade and loopholes and all of that shit. That you need some money to just play the game. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But it's like, there's fucking people who got hits, bro. Hit records that they might not ever be hits because they just don't got the push. They don't got the machine behind it. Or they ain't went viral. You know, just out of nowhere. But it's like, I feel the void of feeling like I needed to make a hit. You know what I'm saying? Because I got, I got records that ring off, but I'm like, I need one that's a fucking just a top 10 smash everywhere around the planet. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I know I got it, and I know I can make it. It's just having that machine behind it. So right. once I was able to fill that void in my head, I just started making the fucking music I wanted to make. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, whoever likes it, likes it, who don't, don't. Like, this whole new project, it's, a, it's an EP. It's probably going to be like seven, eight songs. But this shit trapped out. Like, Is it? Total opposite. Of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Total opposite of fucking the uh, Out the Dark project. Bro. You shot any videos yet? I ain't shot none. I ain't shot no videos yet. Not none? I've really been, like, just cooking, bro. Like, just going to the studio, rapping in there with, you know what I'm saying, FL. He... Cause that nigga, me, I've been doing fucking. I got a fucking R and B project in the cut, nigga. I got so many different projects <laughs> in the cut right now. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like I'm just doing what I want to do. I'm not gonna let nobody box me in just because people feel like, okay, he may have had the hip hop album of the year. Now he has to keep doing that type of shit. Like, no, nah, nigga, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Are you uh, independent? Yeah, I'm indie right now. Independent or mainstream? Or main label? Or get signed to a label? At my at this point in my career, I would want to do like a one off. You know what I'm saying? I would I would do single deals with labels. I wouldn't want to do like just a big three four album deal. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Because at this point, it's like I make music when I want to make music, and I want to drop when I want to drop too. You feel me? So it's like. I, I would rather these artists that I'm working with who's younger, they want to get on stage, they want to go sit in glam, you know what I'm saying, for three <laughs> hours and then go shoot a 16-hour video after that. and then You know what I'm saying? Like, I would want to just, you know, funnel my passion or my pen through them type of artists because they really, really want to be artists. 
as sometimes I don't even really, really want to be an artist. I just put out music because I love music. You know what right. I'm saying? But it's like people be like, you got a show. And I'll be like, all right, babe. <laughs> let me go. Let me go rehearse. Let me go get, get this shit ready. You know what I'm saying? Let me go get in the gym. People like, uh, oh, you got a video shoot today. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I know I got a video shoot today, I'm like, man, I gotta go get some clothes. I gotta go. Do. <laughs> and it's just like a bunch of shit that I don't want to do right, right now. You know what I'm saying? So people are like, you gonna? I know you are gonna have some videos for this project, and I'm just like, I don't know. But you know, I know that's just a part of the game, bro. It's just that just come with the territory. Hell yeah. Well, bro, I want to give you your flowers while I got you here because I appreciate you. You done did a lot for the city. Man. You done made us proud. You get what I'm saying? I know a lot of people, a lot of younger artists and a lot of people around from the city uh, feel like we made it because we got people like you, AP, and a lot of people who are really doing their thing. So I just want to give you your flowers while you're here. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, bro, because it's like... We have so much dope shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are, the, like, the conversations that more people need to see. You know what I'm saying? And then more people need to have. Because just having open and honest conversations, like, we can learn a lot from, you know what I'm saying, each other. And then we could teach a lot to these young niggas. Because it's like, right now, I'm not about to be the 45, 50-year-old, you know what I'm saying, rapper who's <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Like, I want to get to a point where I could go from being, I want to be Gucci. That's Fuck what yeah. I want to be. Hell yeah. I want to be the Gucci of Denver. Because Atlanta got, Gucci got Atlanta popping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's like not, it, even in the sense of, you know what I'm saying? Not even on like none of the politics or the street politics or nothing like that. But just having the keys to be like, hey. I got talent. This nigga hard, put him on. This nigga hard, put him on. You close? She dope. Oh, yeah. It's you up. close? It's about to be up. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit my head. But fuck yeah. Hey. Hell yeah. Well, man, look, I appreciate you again, man. Um, where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me at Trev Rich HD. That's going to be on Instagram. Uh, Trev Rich on Facebook. I mean, you can find me. You don't got to find me, but you <laughs> right. should want to find me. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with it. But yeah, those is like my socials, bro. But I'm really trying to like, that's another thing. Like, I'm trying to get better at being social on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of hard nowadays. Bro, it's, it's, it's so, it's just so, everything is a lot, bro. I'm such a simple nigga. All I want to do is make music, put it out. Make music, put it out. Go make music with people, let them put it out. And that's all I want to do. So maybe I do need a label. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We wait, we wait for it right yeah, now. We wait for it right need now. need a label, bro. Man, well, we appreciate you. Like, again, Street Nerds Radio, the number one station in the streets. Make sure you tap in with us.